Good morning, nerds. Today I'm going to take you on a tour of the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. I'd like to tell you a tale of four painters, Vincent van Gogh, Paul Gauguin, Emile Bernard, and Charles Laval. The four post-impressionists influenced each other's styles, but one, Laval, was nearly erased from history because of tuberculosis. Laval and Gauguin met in 1886 at Pontevin, an artist's colony. A year later, in 1887, Gauguin and Laval traveled together to Panama and Martinique, developing very similar artistic styles. They returned to France in the fall. At the beginning of 1888, Van Gogh, inspired by Gauguin and Laval's journey, traveled to a warmer climate in Arles. Van Gogh frequently traded letters and portraits with Gauguin, Bernard, and Laval. Of Laval's portrait, Van Gogh said, The portrait of Laval is very self-assured, very distinguished and will be precisely one of the paintings you speak of, which one takes before the others have recognized the talent. Gauguin proposed that Bernard and Laval travel to Arles to be with Van Gogh. However, only Gauguin made it to Arles. Infamously, the trip ended poorly. By 1890, Gauguin had cut ties with Laval, maybe because Laval had become engaged to Emile Bernard's sister, Madeleine, who Gauguin had also courted. The self-portrait that Gauguin gave to Laval ended up back in Gauguin's hands at which point he scratched out the original inscription and re-gifted it to Eugène Carrière, another painter. Laval contracted tuberculosis and traveled to Egypt to recover. Charles Laval died of tuberculosis at 33 in 1894. Meanwhile, Gauguin lived on until 1903, achieving great fame. Laval and Gauguin had a very similar painting style, and some art historians speculate that Gauguin's name was slapped onto many of Laval's works in order to inflate their value. Gauguin was effective at erasing Laval from the art world. The National Gallery owns 177 works of art by Gauguin. The National Gallery has one work of art that references Charles Laval, the regifted self-portrait of Gauguin. Tuberculosis did not just kill Charles Laval. At 70, tuberculosis killed Frédéric Auguste Bartholdi, the designer of the Statue of Liberty. At 65, tuberculosis killed Eugène Delacroix, who most viewers will recognize as the painter of Liberty Leading the People. At 44, tuberculosis killed William Tiley Ranney, a prominent pre-Civil War Western painter. At 35, tuberculosis killed Amadeo Medigliani, who had to quit sculpting because of his tuberculosis symptoms, and abused cocaine, opium, and alcohol to hide his symptoms. At 32, tuberculosis killed Theodore Jericho, who was in the process of planning several ambitious pieces about the Spanish Inquisition and the African slave trade when he died. When Charles Laval died of tuberculosis, there was no cure. Now we have treatments that made tuberculosis curable. And yet, tuberculosis has not stopped killing artists. You can see how debilitating tuberculosis can be in works by tuberculosis survivors Paulina Siniatkina and Damien Trudeau. You can see the human toll of tuberculosis in the work of Damien Schumann and Anna Dimitriou. 1.6 million people die of tuberculosis each year, and with them, all of the art they could have created is lost. If you are an art lover, the greatest thing you can do for the art world is to eradicate tuberculosis. As extensively drug-resistant tuberculosis, or XDRTB, becomes more common, we need fast, accurate, and affordable diagnosis more than ever. But Danaher, the parent company of Cepheid, prices its XDR-TB tests at $15 for test, which is unaffordable in many countries with high TB burden. Go to tbfighters.org to tell Danaher to make their XDR-TB tests affordable. And don't forget to be awesome.